Welcome everyone to the Countryside Presbyterian Church on this, the first Sunday of Christmas. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Connie has a couple of announcements for us. Good morning. I'm just here to remind you that if you've changed your pledge, and you're using e-offering, you need to go online and change the pledge with them. If anybody forgets how to do that, just give me a call, I'll be happy to help you. Also, our envelopes are in, but the labels are not on yet, but they'll be in the Narthex next Sunday. And that's it for me. <laughs> Thank you, Connie. So, let's take a moment and let us greet and share the peace of Christ with one another.
unlike most, I have to stand up here on the little. Let us uh, prepare our hearts and minds for the worship of Christ. Never end. 
They have set a star to hang in the sky. With a blazing torch, our God shall lead us. They have sown the world with a garment of light. With swaddling love, our God shall clothe us. For the child's sake, let us not keep silent. For the child's sake, let us not find rest until God's God's earth is robbed in brightness until all God's earth shall burn with light. Prayer for today. O comforter of the world's people, we tarry in you, awaiting a sign. You have long promised that those who hunger shall not taste death before their deliverance, but death swaggers now outside our door taunting us with each strike of the clock. Redeem us, O God. Send your light into our mists. Deliver your spirit into our hearts. Then we, once fable, shall cry, God, my mother. We, once fable, shall cry, God, my father. We, once feeble, we become your children. We, once feeble, Take your name. Amen. Please be seated. The reading from the Old Testament today is from the book of Isaiah. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exalt in my God. For he has clothed me in the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robes of righteousness and as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For the earth has brought, brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all nations. For Zion's sake I will not keep silent. For Jerusalem's sake I will not rest until her vindication shines out the, like, the, like the dawn, and her salvation like a burning torch. The nation shall see your vindication and all kings your glory, and you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give you. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord and the royal deity in your hand of your God. Thank you. 
The gospel lesson for this first Sunday of Christmas is out of the gospel of Luke, the second chapter, beginning with the 22nd verse. May we listen to the word. When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord, and may offer to sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace, according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, this child, is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed, so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce his own soul too. There is also a prophet, Anna, of the tribe of Asher. She was of a great age, having lived with her husband for seven years after her marriage than as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshiped there with fasting and prayer, night and day. At that moment, she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of of Jerusalem. When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to the own town of Nazareth, The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. This is the word of the Lord. All of the Christmas packages have been unwrapped at our house. The paper and boxes have been put up or put in the trash, we save boxes so we can reuse them the following year. The returns have been made on Boxing Day, and special bargains at stores have been seen either at 66% off or now at 75% off. I walked into a store yesterday had one of our international students with me, and when I walked out, he said, well, how much did you pay for that whole bag? I said, $14.22. He says, oh my goodness, you got all that for a little bit over $14? I said, it was 75% off. Today is the last day of 2023. We will watch football games. Well, we've already done that, and maybe our favorite team didn't win. And maybe one team only got three points. <laughs> you can tell what I was doing yesterday and last night. But tomorrow we will be in 2024. Think about what has happened in 2023, how you have been blessed how you have been taken care of, how you have made new friends. And some of us have lost family members and friends in 2023. The baby has been born in Bethlehem. 
and the angels have sung. Mary has recuperated from having the child. And this child has been fed, has been taken care of, has been nurtured by loving, caring parents. The family has lived in that stable, that dirty, smelly stable among the animals. And it's now time to leave and virtue out into the world. Mary and Joseph are on the way to take Jesus to fulfill the letter of Jewish law. And their diligence raises questions for Christians who have felt no obligation to the Old Testament law. We see a family bringing their newborn child to the temple to make a sacrifice. In our comfortable world, parents and newborns usually receive gifts instead of making them. What if we sacrifice something of eminence value to mark a birth, to consecrate a child to God? Imagine the spiritual and emotional toll on Mary and Joseph during this past year. They are given a divine mission to complete in their human flesh. These two parents are within the first 40 days of life for this baby. They have journeyed from Nazareth to Jerusalem, to Bethlehem, back to Jerusalem during a time of emotional and physical exhaustion. The text opens with the young and weary Mary and Joseph at the temple with their new baby boy. After many sleepless, uncomfortable nights in that stable, they made two elders of the temple. These elders have been waiting for a lifetime to meet the Messiah. It appears that Mary and Joseph have brought him to the temple in their arms. And during that time, that was only the way they could carry a small baby. They didn't have a stroller. They didn't have a car seat that turned into a carrier. They may have had some cloth that they wrapped around them. But that's all they had. Nothing like new parents have today. Simeon and Anna have waited a lifetime for this moment to come. For Joseph and Mary, it is only the beginning of the stewardship of a favored life. It's the beginning of a journey of unanswered questions. They know. They have a long way to go. They have a responsibility as parents to raise this child. But as we look at Joseph and Mary, they were very young parents of limited means. They struggled to get to Bethlehem for the census. And there was no room at the inn Joseph could not afford a holiday inn. He stood by helpless and poor, watching the mother of his child give birth. Next to all the animals. And after his divine child's arrival in the world, he witnessed shepherds and others coming to worship this baby. Sometimes we live in a society where it's difficult to understand the blessings of poverty. Mary and Joseph, like many poor parents in our midst today, are trying to be faithful. 
That journey was not easy. It was not easy for them to live that way. They hold new life and future possibilities in their arms. The small baby. They possess faith. And yet they must find a way to afford the social expectations of church life. And now we have two elders of the church, Simeon and Anna. The Spirit rests upon them. And due to that marriage of a religious life and a Spirit-filled life, they are able to see things that we, as a common people of the day, could not see. It is these religious elders who recognize Jesus as a Messiah. They are the ones who see him, him, consolation for Israel. The text tells us that Simeon was guided by the Spirit. And when he arrived in the temple, he saw these two young parents who had come a long way to follow the law of the Lord. These young parents, like Many others of our time could have made the decision to give up on their faith because it cost too much. But Mary and Joseph remain committed to the rituals of their faith. Simeon was a seasoned man of faith, as one who had a deep relationship with God. Imagine being this seasoned person of faith who had the chance to witness a poor teen mom and dad with an anointed one in their care. Imagine knowing they had a child with tremendous promise and possibility. You know, as people of faith in a privileged nation, We have an obligation to care for the poor, to help raise the children. We miss out sometimes when we don't do that. It is a gift from us to help. Perhaps at times we are called to be that positive regard for the struggling, the faithful parents of today's world. We create a society for children to help. Perhaps Mary, too, shuddered at Simeon's remarks. He spoke of a sword piercing her soul. It is moving to think of Mary feeling Jesus kicking in her womb, hearing his first cry nursing him, watching his first steps like any normal baby toddler. With the grace of God and the commitment of his parents and surrendered by hopes and dreams, he was launched toward becoming the person God intended for him to be. If we look at the overview of this passage. Jesus is presented as a Messiah whose mission in many ways follows that of the Hebrew prophets. He parallels with the prophets. Simeon first announces the future path and his pronouncement in the entirety of Luke's gospel. The prophet proclaims And in Jesus' case, also brings about the divine reversal. Mary proclaims in her Magnificat, the powerful are cast down from their thrones. Jesus is the offer of salvation. Simeon predicts that the child will be a light to the nations. 
And in his sermon in the synagogue at Nazareth, Jesus draws on the prophets to assert the Gentiles have a place in salvation. For Luke, Jesus' Messiahship is a means whereby the Gentiles are intended in the promise of God. We are promised a Messiah in these words. We are promised a Messiah to live with us and be with us in every avenue of our lives. As we go into 2024, let us remember those words that Jesus was born in a manger in Bethlehem and is the salvation for each one of us. Amen. To stand and affirm our faith by saying the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
Let us pray. Gracious God, we have been given so much during this Christmas season. We've been given love and care and compassion. And Lord God Almighty, we have been giving to the church, giving of ourselves, giving our faith, our love, and our care. And Lord God Almighty, we ask you to bless these offering plates today as we give back to the church a portion of what we have. Amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. For prayer concerns for today, uh, Bonnie Heinrich has COVID. Um, you know, she had been in the hospital with pneumonia. Um, I talked to Jim on Friday, and he sounds, he sounds croupy on the phone. I mean, he's coughing and everything also. Joan Wells, who is a CRE um, certified ruling elder from this church, um, texted me this morning when I, I text all the ministers in the area every Sunday morning, and she texts me back, and she also has COVID. She said that she cannot talk, um, and she had tried to go to emergency care, and she said she lives alone, and she finally went to emergency care, and she said, uh, I am at, at home, and I'm alone, and I don't feel good. So we do need to keep both of these in our prayers today. Are there any other prayer concerns? Yes. Yes, Sue. Prayers, 
he is making a wonderful recovery. And I can't thank you enough for helping with your prayers. Remember, prayer works. Thank you. You're welcome. And I heard that he ate a lot during Christmas, too. <laughs> Sweets. Because he loves them. Yeah, that's first of the year. That's when we all go on diets, right? Okay. May we go to the Lord in prayer. Lord God Almighty, we look outside and we see a crisp, glorious day. Yes, Lord, it was a little cool this morning. Felt like I was back in Indiana. But the sun has come out and we look outside and hopefully it has gotten a little bit warmer. Yes, at times, Lord, that's why we live in Florida, for warmth. But every now and then you give us a little bit of cold just to remind us that that's what we once lived in. And we say thank you for that. We can pull out sweaters and wear them every now and then. You are a very glorious God. We have been through a time of celebration of Advent and then Christmas Eve and Christmas. A time of sharing with loved ones, with family, with brothers and sisters and children. And looking at new life how it will change in two or three months. And grandchildren come into the world. Lord God, we have shared in presence. We have shared in words. We have shared in gifts. And we have shared in thank yous. Thank yous, Lord. For you have blessed us so abundantly. We look at ourselves and we say thank you each morning that we get up. It's another brand new day. It's another day that we go out and take the dog for a walk. Because they will remind us that we didn't take him for a walk. But it's also a time that we say thank you for leadership. Thank you for the workers of this church. Thank you for the elders of session and everything that they do for the church that at times we know nothing about. It is just done. God, we also look out into the world and it is a needy world at times. We see those that have no shelter to call their own. The family is lost or the family has died. Where do these people go? Who do they lean on? They lean on the church. The church is their telephone pole to lean on. The church is where they receive the love and concern. And all they have to do is go to the church and there's someone there to greet them. God, we also look out into a world and we see tears coming down people's eyes. As they sit at a bedside in a hospital or a hospice loving and caring for a loved one, loving that loved one until that loved one takes their last breath. We also look out in the world that shares, shares compassion, shares love with one another. Lord God Almighty, we pray without ceasing for those that are ill, for those that have the faith to get well again. We pray for Bonnie 
and Joan. We pray for Jim as well. And we pray for those that are ill and sick among us. We pray for those first responders as you go into the emergency unit of a hospital, the first ones that greet you. They sometimes have a very tough job to tell a family member that they have lost their loved one. Lord God Almighty, we pray for families that were not complete this year. For their family was overseas. Or their daughter or son was serving in a foreign country or on board ship. We pray, O oh Lord, for those that go out and preach the gospel in foreign lands that have been taken away from families at time. And we pray for, without ceasing. We ask you, O oh Lord, to give us grace. We're not perfect children. We have done things that we're not proud of. And we ask for your forgiveness and your grace this day in everything that we do. Hear us now as we unite in prayer, pray the prayer that your son prayed with his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I would like to give all of you a quick reminder, if you purchase a uh, Christmas Ponzetia, please take it home with you at the end of this worship service. And if not, these will be taken to some of the nursing homes here in Ocala. So uh, help yourself 
to your Ponsettia. They have been beautiful this whole Christmas Advent season. God is good all the time. God is good for each one of us as God has given us love, care, and compassion as children of the world. And may God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit go out with you this day into the world to worship him. Amen. Mm -hmm.